name is uh, Maribel Nunez. Uh, I'm the organizer uh, here in the Inland Empire in Coachella Valley uh, with California Partnership. Welcome everyone for today's rally. Um, IE State Budget Prep Conference, Tear Down the Wall of Poverty Rally. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, we're here today because the governor came out uh, in his budget proposal. Every year in January, he comes out with a proposal of what he would like to see uh, at the state level. Uh, in regards to uh, what we have seen in 2008, since his 2008, we have seen major cuts uh, within Health and Human Services, $15 billion. And in collaboration with the partners here, Proposition 30 pass and it raised taxes on the top one or two percent. So we, we did that. We helped raise revenue from our, for our programs, education and health care and human services. And so now we are not talking about deficits anymore. Now we're talking about surpluses. And so in that effort, a lot of us fought very hard because when we have surpluses, then we can start doing more work in restoring the cuts in education and health and human services. And so we, um, we are expecting the governor to fulfill that promise. California has always been number one, and we wanted to continue being number one in regards for immigrant rights, health care, everything else in education. We used to be number one, and we need to go back to be number one on education. Let's tear down this wall of poverty. So our first speaker is uh, Ms. Ruthie Goldcorn, and she's from the Disabled Access uh, Consulting and Advocacy Services. And so she'll talk to us a little bit more about SSI, and just to let you guys know, there was no announcement of the governor to restore SSI. So that's that's the biggest appointment. Let's go ahead and welcome Ms. Ruthie Goldcorn. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you for standing up, standing tall, standing proud. My name is Ruthie Goldcorn. I have been a resident of California since 1973, a resident of Moreno Valley for 26 years. I began No Barriers Disabled Access Consulting and Advocacy Services 19 years ago. I am the chair of the California Democratic Party Disabilities Caucus, and I have served for 20 years on the Executive Committee and the Legislative Committee of Californians for Disability Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to speak of the zero percent who are millions of Californians, the underrepresented, the underserved, the underhoused. Ladies and gentlemen, our message today to the governor and to members of the legislature is congratulations on keeping your promises, the fiscal strategies that took California from the gray and bleak days of one of the greatest economic calamities to restoring California to the status as the golden state. Ladies and gentlemen, our plea today is to keep your promises, including the promise made by former Speaker John Perez in 2013 to restore funding to social programs, and your promise, Governor Brown, to restore the 8% cut to IHSS and the legislative promise to increase the economic floor to the elderly and persons with disability known as SSI, SSP. Your promise of restoring COLA, which was eliminated in 2009, is not an option. Basic human needs cannot be bought with $877 a month, which is the current amount. This is below the federal poverty level, and it is unacceptable. Ladies and gentlemen, there has been a $192 million reduction to SSI SSP since 2008. Give us our money back and provide the programs and services you promised. Yeah! Restoring the SSI SSP COA, providing the programs and services the greatest generation will require to age in place and keeping our kids, their parents, and adults with disabilities in the home setting of their choice. Thank you. Much, Ms. Ruthie. So yes, let's take the, the promise is a promise. Um, I want to introduce our next speaker, uh, Rosie Flores, uh, with Riverside Alamo Sonet, and she's also part of our California Partnership team. Let's <laughs> Hi, I'm Rosie Flores, and I am formerly incarcerated. Um, I get CalWORKs and I'm gonna speak on it. Yeah. Since 2008, yeah. we have gotten one billion dollars cut from it, and I know firsthand what it's like, not only as formerly incarcerated, but not to have childcare for my son, 
not to be able to take care of my son. I go to school full time. I, uh, I work and I still have not enough, I have not enough help to take care of my son. When I go to school, when I go to work, I have to do it while he's in school. As a, as a recovering addict, in recovery, I, I came here trying to better my life and doing so, I, I needed a little help. There's a, so many people like me who have who are getting out of prisons, getting out of jails, yeah. with children yeah. who have yeah. no help yeah. from anybody, and their Woo. children are left alone while the parents are trying to help themselves yeah. to become better people in society and try to be better people for their children. Yeah. So their children have yeah. have an have an opportunity at life. It's very hard to see this happening, not just for myself, but for others. Now they're saying that we can't have kids. We have that, they want to control how many kids we have. What? Uh -huh. Senate Bill 23 is, re is the opportunity to repeal the maximum family grant. If I have more than one kid in a, in a, time, in a time period, then they're not eligible to receive food stamps or CalWORKs. They're not eligible for, for child care. What am I supposed to do if I get pregnant? What am I supposed to do? What are those kids that are already born supposed to do while only one kid is getting fed? We need restorations. trying to get their lives back together. It's not going to save the kids who are homeless because they, we don't have any restorations to help the mothers and parents to have a roof over their head or food in their stomachs. Yeah. We want restorations now. No restorations! No peace! No restorations! No peace! No restorations! No peace! So yeah, so let's get Senate Bill 23 to pass to repeal the maximum family grant. It's authored by Holly Mitchell, so let's let's make that happen. So let's go ahead and introduce a, a series of speakers that are going to talk about health for all. I want to introduce Ms., uh, Mr. Fernando Romero. He's a coordinator of the Justice for Immigrants Coalition. Uh, let's welcome him. Justice for Immigrants Coalition of Inland Empire. Uh, the coalition is comprised of about 20 different groups uh, for the Inland Empire, and I'm here to speak to you on behalf of uh, something that's very important to all the people that are here, for all the people in the Inland Empire. We're, I'm here to talk to you about health care. The governor is saying that we need to wait until the president acts, until the president or immigration reform comes down from Congress. And the thing is that the people in the, in here in the Inland Empire, in the state of California, can't wait that long. We can't wait another day for uh, health coverage. Uh, whether undocumented or, uh, or documented, people need health coverage. People are getting sick every day. Uh, as an undocumented person myself, when I was undocumented for 20 years of my life, I, I understand the, the tribulations that people go through to attain some sort of coverage. And a lot of, a lot of times people, what they do is they, they postpone their, their doctor visit, even when they are sick. A lot of times they postpone uh, any, any major disorder that they might have or they, that they sense because they don't have any health coverage, because they are undocumented. And what we're saying today is that the, uh, the SB4... Uh, what we're asking is that the governor, we're asking the governor is to invest in California, to invest in the uh, undocumented population of California. Last year was a very successful year for uh, undocumented uh, immigrant rights organizations. We passed AB 16 2013 as well as a trust act. The JFIC, the coalition, has been doing a lot of work around this, uh, there's a, there's a, that legislation, and we plan to do so once SB4 comes through. But at the same time, we're asking the governor is to invest in California, to invest in the immigrant population of California, because it, putting money set aside specifically for health coverage for SB4 and for undocumented people in this in the state will definitely uh, assist and benefit the state of California the same way that you know we allow undocumented children to go to the K through 12 system. We see that, that that they are California residents. We see that as a benefit. We know that an educated society an educated society benefits everybody. 
a healthy society will benefit everybody. And we're asking Governor Brown to do that today, and we're asking for them for him to put money set for uh, to cover the remaining insurance. So hopefully 20, uh, 2050 will yield us that triumph, just like we did with, with AB, uh, AB 60 and the trust act a few years ago. And you know, with the, with the, with the people that are here, we know that the, we're going to make that happen. So thank you very much, and hopefully we'll make it a, a, a successful year. Thank you. So our next speaker is uh, Ms. Uh, Vianney Murillo. She's from the Inland Empire Immigrant Youth Coalition. The Inland Empire Immigrant Youth Coalition is, was also at the forefront of AB60, pushing for health for all last year with Senate Bill 1005, and has done great field work. And uh, she'll talk a little bit about some of the work that's been done for, for Medi-Cal and for health for all. Let's welcome Vianney. mentioned I'm part of the Inland Empire Immigrant Youth Coalition yeah. and uh, our main focus as a coalition is to assist the youth in the Inland Empire to apply to the Deferred Action Program. The DACA youth uh, are el also eligible for Medi-Cal. We also give information to the youth um, uh, that way they have access to the uh, Medi-Cal services. So uh, we have helped over 3,000 youth in the Inland Empire to enroll to DACA. That means this youth can also apply to Medi-Cal, but unfortunately, um, the enrollers in the, in the counties of San Bernardino and Riverside are now well informed to assist us. So uh, what I did, what the coalition did over the summer, we carry a research project to uh, construct a, a resource guide to include clinics, but also services to uh, that can benefit the the low-income families regardless of the status. In the meantime, there's something out there for the undocumented community. So we constructed that research guide. I had um, the opportunity to uh, attend my first doctor's appointment after seven years. Uh, I haven't gone to the doctor uh, for seven years, so me neglecting my own health. Um, this happens to many people uh, in my community, especially uh, being undocumented, we just use the band-aid care, whatever home remedy we could get. We go with that and continue working, continue our, our daily routines. And I know there's four million uh, people out there who just like me have been waiting to see a doctor. So this is the reason why uh, I support the Health for All Bill, but also uh, the restorations to Medi-Cal because there's eight million people who benefit from Medi-Cal and having a 10% cut and uh, that medical providers, that means less doctors for us, less options for us. Um, so let's keep keep pushing for health for all, but also the restoration of medical. And I'm with you on this. Oh, wow.